All right, so it's been about 90 days or so, and uh, really coming into sort of a focus on what I'm trying to do for different investors in, in different uh, different areas. So I want to sort of review um, the investment program that uh, that's now coming into sort of uh, fruition, and actually close with reviewing sort of the 10 properties that uh, I've already put through the program. So as always, we're going to start with the goal of the session. Uh, we're going to sort of talk about why you know I'm starting to create this. Uh, this focus or laser focus on a particular area, sort of run through that with you. Uh, we're going to sort of give you at least an indication of where I look and, and things that uh, are of interest to sort of qualify for this. We'll also do, you know, a real quick review of what I don't target and, and sort of talk about why I think that is in, in, in that area. Uh, what you can expect from a, a particular property uh, if you happen to, to look at something that uh, that's gone through and, and is sort of on the other end of it, what, what does that really mean? Uh, and then again, we'll just go through this, the stories of the first uh, 10 properties. Uh, it's hard to believe it's been 90 days I've been doing this and already have 10 properties um, sort of in the program at, at various different phases. So it's, uh, it's quite impressive, I think. So why? Um, first, I've always liked to focus on markets or areas of business that have less competition. Uh, what I mean by this in this particular area is, is if you think about flipping, um, I would say that there's, I don't know, maybe 80% uh, or more people sort of flipping for uh, the owner occupants, right? They're trying to f they're trying to flip for the FHA buyer, somebody who has 3% down, um, you know, can get a 30-year loan and, and, and go forward. I think that's a very profitable business, don't get me wrong. Uh, I think there's lots of people out there. I think people who do this will make more money per flip than, than I will. There, there's no question. Um, I just think, you know, I, you know, first off, I, I, I really just don't want to do that. Right? It's not what I, where I've been focused for 15 or 16 years. I've always been in the rental area. Uh, I like to stay there. I like to t use my experience for something. If I suddenly become an owner occupant flipper, I would be, you know, stretching to relate anything we've done the last 15 years to, to that. So uh, I'm not going to, not going to get off, off of, off my sort of targets. Uh, and it admittedly won't make as much money, but you know I will be I will be happier uh, and a lot more valuable to people that I work with. Again, all my experience is in being a landlord, so I should focus and use my strengths. And and um, lucky enough where I don't have to grind out that extra ten or twenty grand per flip uh, by only doing owner occupants, because obviously an owner occupant buyer who gets an FHA loan will just pay more. Um, you know, it's just how it is, and, and investors don't want to, can't do that, right? So, and, and that's okay, and, and I'm okay making less money per uh, per property. And again, I like to help people down this path, whether it's uh, going out and having a conversation with someone about uh, getting started. Why, what, you know, it's why I wrote the book. It's The, the book is um, something, if you haven't read, you should, because it, it really does a, a decent job, I'm told, of relating 15 years of history and multiple different checkpoints and things that we could have that could have derailed us and, and, and all of that. So um, that's the, the biggest joy I get is somebody getting started or, or helping someone take that next step. Maybe you have three, four, five, and you want to go to 10 or 15. You know, what, what does that look like? And again, wh who am I target or who I'm trying to help? I'm trying to help people um, who have cash, right, who suffer from crap, cash rich, asset poor, um, but they have limited time. So I want to try to, to, you know, bring a property to market that has, you know, that, that's already leased at market, that has repairs done to it that are landlord friendly and, you know, just, just those things. And, um, you know, thus far in the first 10, it's, it's proven to be very valuable. Uh, so the properties that I target, um, you know, clearly if you've looked at any of the flip videos, I target prop properties that have problems. Uh, and more specifically, problems that I can fix profitably, right? So, you know, hey, if it needs a new roof and it's, uh, you know, I don't know, a $12,000 roof and it has a $15,000 discount, so that's probably not enough, right? But if it's got a $12,000 roof problem and I can get a $40,000 discount, that's profitable, right? Because there's, you know, there's always more stuff to do. Um, I really do like to look for properties that have small multifamilies. You know, we're talking two, three, maybe four units. Uh, really like two houses on one lot, especially if you can create separation and it really does feel like two homes. Um, 
you know, I like, there's some single family homes that will always be rentals to me, right? There's a couple that I purchased recently there in, I want to call semi-industrial, right? There's, there's maybe a street of 10 houses and they're cute houses, but for whatever reason, you know, all around them are light industrial. Um, those will likely always be rentals. It's not, it's not necessarily a bad area and the, the houses are really cute and, and, and structurally sound and, you know, all those good things. But, you know, there's not really, um, there's not really restaurants or any things you can walk to. So, um, you know, those kind of areas will always be rentals in my opinion. And, and the flippers who are doing owner occupants and FHA will likely avoid it. Um, so again, I like to be in areas, um, with less competition. Another one I like to do is focus on rentals that are rented below market. All right, some of the things I'm looking at now, for example, um, you know, a landlord's had them for years, if not decades, and they're rented at six or six fifty, and they should be nine fifty or, or more. Um, you know, if you can buy an asset at, you know, be, you know, an, an asset sometimes are, are calculated or priced based on existing rents, and if you can buy an asset that's you know run down and and collecting only six hundred per, and you can go in and spend ninety days or four months. Fixing them up and 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 you know, now they're producing nine hundred. You know you, you've added value. Um, the other ones I like are big houses. You know with uh, I'll call it wasted square footage. You know maybe there's a huge living room and a family room and a dining room. You know and and you know there's five six seven hundred square feet of just you know space that doesn't add to rent. Rents are most often. Um, increased with <clears throat> additional bedrooms bathrooms and if you can for some reason increase the parking right if you can take it from street parking to carport from carport to garage those kinds of things uh, and then the last one are either ugly houses you know ugly you know i don't know, just you, you know ugly houses or rentals from slumlords uh, i do think this is an area that i'm going to be picking up a lot of stuff in the next couple of years because the city if you've seen some of my past videos is getting kind of aggressive and I actually saw my first listing in the MLS that says, Hey, buy property at your own risk. City of Fresno has fines that are accumulating and you know, yada, yada, yada. That's uh, you know, that landlord's in trouble and that building's in trouble, but I'm, you know, depending on what the issues are, I'm very likely going to use that as a stressful situation to go buy it and, and fix the building, help the tenants and, you know, help the city of Fresno. So, I see that starting. I was very intrigued to see that listing uh, and expect to see a lot more of those. What I don't target, uh, I don't look for any houses above the median. Uh, I think the last time I checked the median was 264K. Why that is, it's just it doesn't make good rentals, right? It's just a, you know, sure, could I go buy a 500 grand house? Sure, but it's it's got to be an owner-occupant. You're not going to you're not gonna rent that out. So I don't look for any houses above that. Um, Another one I don't look at, and this was uh, actually got this from a conversation over the weekend from another investor um, who had some experience in this, as, as I do. And I don't like multifamilies. You know, you know, I don't know what some they're big to me, but maybe they're small to others. You know, the ten units, twenty unit, you know, kind of buildings that feel more like hotels, where there's not really separation from units. If you if you get a lot of people in a very tight space, uh, you're just gonna have issues. Um, you know, you'll be lucky if there's just hard feelings between neighbors. Um, so I don't really look for that, right? If it's just a shotgun hallway and I can't create separation via small fences or whatnot, um, it would have to be a really good deal for me to, to go in and, and tackle that. Um, you know, if it's small, maybe three, four units, I, I can certainly do that, but certainly not 10, 15, 20 units. Um, uh, you need to have space. Tenant needs to have space. Um, you're going to have a lot less turns, a lot less drama, then, you know, 10 families just sort of on top of each other. That's that's just not good. Um, another one is those single family homes that should be flipped. You know, the you know, the two one in the in the nice area. Um, you know, if you're going to get a bunch of, uh, um, you know, you know, single family home flippers bidding on it, that's not for me. Right. Um, you know, I'll sort of jump to the last bullet. I don't I don't get any bidding wars. And I've seen some properties that that are going to be flips, you know, get into bidding wars and it's just not worth it for me. Uh, I'll sit back and look elsewhere. And then, you know, going back to that second to last bullet is I don't, I, I get calls and, you know, Hey, come look at this area, this area, you know, 45 minutes away. Um, it's just, I guess I could, but I, I haven't looked there yet. 
Um, don't want to do that to the team. I got enough stuff going on and, and don't need to add extra travel time to, uh, to the team. Uh, so what can you expect? First, you know, anything that comes out of the program for me will be uh, rented or leased uh, at market. Um, yeah, I will also keep it in the program to verify that the tenants have paid at least two full months at the new rental history. Um, I know there's some uh, investment firms out there, if you will, who are uh, slapping a tenant in, come hell or high water, giving a bogus lease and um, you know, somebody buys it and, and they don't even make the first month's rent payment. That's that's not okay. So I'm going to keep them in the portfolio. They cash flow just fine, obviously. So I'm going to keep them in my portfolio for at least two months to verify that they're making uh, the payment. Because um, again, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to do the right thing and, and make sure that they um, are paying the rent or the lease, if you will. Uh, and then there's the sort of bifurcation. If I have to actually vacate a property and turn it versus if the tenant just decides to stay and, and, and absorb the rental increase. So if I if the property gets vacated, uh, things are going to happen for sure. So we're going to put down um, flooring, like laminate flooring, so it's easier to turn, um, you know, as the new owner owns it years down the line. You know, we're not going to just put in carpet, even though carpet's cheaper. Um, it, long term is a bad idea. We're going to put in new countertops for sure. Uh, we're going to do undermount sinks, right? So again, removing the issues with caulking and all of that. Uh, we're likely going to be putting ceiling fans in all uh, main living rooms and bedrooms. We'll do two-tone paints inside and out. Uh, we'll put tile in the bathroom, kitchen. You know, if the cabinet needs to go, we'll put in new cabinets. Um, you know, just all those things. And that's why the, the turn costs are, are what they are, and they're, they're pretty expensive. Um, if the tenant decides to stay, uh, we're obviously going to do all the required work or safety issues. Uh, we're going to likely upgrade uh, many of the fixtures. Uh, but things we won't do, for example, if they have carpet already and it's clean, not frayed, all of that, uh, and they like it, we're just going to leave it, right? Why, if the tenant likes it and they've agreed to stay, why, why change it? Um, so we will make slightly different decisions if the tenant decides to stay. Uh, and it's it's interesting, um, as you'll see when I go through the story, many of the tenants knew they were paying under rent and uh, are intrigued to stay, pay market, uh, and, and see the repairs done to their units. So here's the story of the first uh, 10. Uh, we'll just go through each of them. So property number one, we um, we raised the rent on the front house roughly from, from 800 to over nine. Uh, it needed basic repairs. I think it was just a couple of thousand dollars. Uh, but this is the one with the, the back house that had, uh, had some squatters in there. So we needed to spend time to vacate that. Uh, it is vacated. We're gonna be spending probably just over 10 grand repairing it and then once done, um, renting that one bedroom out for call it 700 so the total rents will be over 1600 uh, very solid uh, solid transaction property two needed to be vacated uh, was in horrible condition so we just gutted everything removed everything changed all the flooring walls paint uh, you know fixtures new kitchen new bathrooms uh, but uh, we also uh, added a bedroom you know went from two to from two to three and then we uh, added a half bath uh, a, a toilet actually in the uh, the master bedroom. So uh, we took something that max would go for eight and, and it will now lease and we have multiple applications over a thousand dollars. Property three uh, is, uh, is a relatively big house. It's uh, one of those two house combos in, in an area that's, uh, you know, all told of five bedrooms, two baths. Uh, so we've raised the rent from uh, 800 to 1200 uh, tenants uh, going to stay. Um, we agreed to do roughly 12,000 in repairs on the back house. Uh, it hadn't been repaired in a while. Uh, so we're doing that and um, uh, the family's extremely excited. Is there uh, adult kids or young adult kids will be moving back into that because it wasn't livable as is and we're gonna fix that and uh, everybody's happy. Uh, property four was actually a little one bedroom, one house, one bedroom, one bath house, which I love. I love little houses like that uh, because people love housing and if you could buy it cheaply and rightly, uh, it's it's a great thing. We took the rent from uh, 500 to 750. Guy said, "Great, just, you know, need a, you know, can you repair the fence? Uh, there's a leak in the, under the sink, and you know, just basic things. All told, we're spending just I think it's just under 5k, might be just over. Uh, and the tenant's uh, happy to stay, and actually has already paid the first month's rent at the new rate. Um, so it's a, another solid transaction. Uh, number five. Um, we're issued a 60 day to vacate as the tenant just needs to go, paying way under market. 
and not, take, not taking particularly care of the property, so we don't want to uh, give them the option to pay the higher rent. It's just not worth it because why, why do all the repairs only to have a tenant that's going to destroy it again? Um, so we're going to have to go through the full process on this one. It'll be 60 days with uh, existing rents. I think it's like 600. Um, we will then vacate it, probably spend two to three weeks um, turning it and then re-releasing -re -re it at 950 or more. Um, actually, the property next door, which is property six, uh, slightly different story. Tenants are very, uh, very clean, taking great care of the property. So we're, uh, we're going to be raising the rent. Uh, they're actually currently deciding if they want to stay or not. Uh, my guess is they're going to see that um, uh, they likely will stay. Uh, if they do, they spend about 8K in repairs, and if they leave, uh, repairs are going to be slightly higher at roughly 12K. Property 7 actually was a vacant duplex uh, that um, actually had one of the units remodeled, or at least 90% remodeled. Uh, so we are completing that uh, and then fully remodeling uh, the uh, larger two bedroom. This is a, a duplex that sort of fits the model where we can configure it where one, the, what I call the front unit gets the front yard and the back unit gets the backyard. So again, it sort of feels like two separate spaces. You know, if they both had kids, one could play in the front yard, one could play in the backyard. It's, uh, it's just one of those deals that makes sense. Property eight, um, uh, where we've uh, issued a, um, you know, raising of rents. Um, they, you know, get 60 days, they've decided that they would like to move and, you know, that will happen and, uh, we will just go in and clean up and it's actually not in horrible condition, but, uh, I haven't got a bit on that, but, you know, having seen it's probably, let's call it eight grand. Um, and then we will just lease at market and then rounding up, uh, is the next couple that are, uh, we own triplex, uh, is a great, is, I think it's going to be a great, uh, you know, help to the area and and uh, will be a great building for uh, a new investor. It actually has two houses, so it sort of fits the model, uh, where actually the front unit actually has a studio uh, upstairs, and the studio is actually rather large. Uh, it's almost 600 square feet, which is, um, is kind of nice. So, uh, you know, this one is, um, you know, we have to spend uh, roughly 20 grand already uh, just on the outside. Uh, the stairs needed to be replaced. The, the team did a great job and did that, uh, you know, in the first two days or so we owned it. Uh, while we're doing that, we're painting both units, repairing all the wood and, and, and all of that. So we're spending 20 grand immediately on the outside. And then we're going to be waiting 60 days for the tenants to vacate as the, uh, we don't want them to stay. They, you know, they won't be able to pay the new rent. They're a problem um, that we've inherited and uh, we're going to do everything we can to get them out and this to take 60 days. Uh, and then we will go back in and, and likely spend 25 to 30K uh, repairing um, the inside of the units. And then the final one, uh, I should say property 10 there, sorry, didn't, didn't change that, uh, is a single family home uh, in Madeira, kind of in that, you know, semi-industrial area that um, actually we are going, we're, we're not closing for another 30 days because um, the existing tenants agreed to vacate. Uh, so we're waiting for them to do that. Then we will close and, and just jump right into a remodel and, and lease. And, um, you know, it'd be a, uh, another solid rental uh, for someone. In the end, that's the story. That's, that's the investor program that's becoming a focus. Uh, that's a review of things that we look for and don't. Uh, and then finally, a story of the first 10 uh, that have gone through this process. Again, it's, 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 uh, it's interesting to see what's been done in the first 90 days of doing this. Uh, look forward to seeing what the next 90 day holds for all of us. Uh, and with that, uh, I want to thank you. Please, uh, please like this video if you uh, if you like it. Leave a comment or question below. Uh, and most of all, share this video as we're trying to expand the channel. Uh, last time I checked, we're stuck at 99 subscribers. I would certainly like to see us uh, get over 100. So uh, have a great day and take care.